Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com. Uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, training day. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, all we ask is take a second uh, to like the video, show support from the channel so we can continue uh, to give you unbiased uh, views of technical uh, analysis. So let's talk about the market. You know, yesterday uh, we closed below uh, the 20 day moving average, and, you know, I made a joke of it, but Really wasn't a joke that every single time uh, this year in 2024, when we closed above the 2000, before we closed uh, below the 220 day moving average, miraculously the next day we somehow got above it. And the today was absolutely no difference. Uh, if you look at the scoreboard today, nothing's going to scream out to you, um, you know, one way or another. You know, you had the Dow down 43 points, SP up five. Uh, NASDAQ up 37. NASDAQ was up about 100 points uh, for the majority of days. And just like the instances we saw on February the 22nd, uh, March the 19th, and what we saw in yesterday's close, we reclaimed back supply. The only difference is we got rejected back into the 10 day moving average, which is going to be a very, very important level uh, for tomorrow. You know, if you told me a year ago, two years ago, that it is bullish losing the 20-day moving average only to reclaim it back several times on a linear bull market, I would look at you like you have five heads. Again, like I always say, here we are. So the bulls did a pretty good job. You had a lot of pretty good uh, price improvements from previous channels. We'll go through uh, some names uh, in a second. We had some names that busted out of their channels. We talked about last night on um, Meta. You had some news coming out on Google uh, after the close that they are uh, considering charging uh, for their uh, AI Gemini. And then people realize after the initial surge to all the way to almost 159, people realize, oh, wait a minute, why am I going to pay for Gemini when I could get it probably for free from 2,000 dozen other places? And you can see the reaction. I still want to see how the stock performs uh, in the regular session tomorrow, uh, again, we want to keep an eye on this thing on the April 1st highs uh, and see if it could get through. But all, all in all, you did have some pretty good uh, price improvements like we talked about last night on Meta. Uh, Meta finally got above supply. This is literally the, the bigger move, uh, the biggest move of the day. Uh, big, big move today came out of the 500 channels. We'll get to the literally individual pivots in a second. Uh, pretty much closed uh, at the highs uh, of the day, but more important, you had some names that were kind of stuck in the mud, get back above the previous channels. And Apple was one of those names, right? Even though Apple got rejected back to the five day moving average and by no stretch of the imagination, uh, is this thing out of the water? At least it showed a little bit of life. It showed a little bit of fight, uh, even a name like Tesla. And we, we know what happens, uh, when Tesla has, uh, uh, an update, right? We know what happens. You know, every single time Tesla tries to get it back above the channel, it gets stuffed the next day and goes lower. But at least, just like in the same case of Apple, Tesla at least got back above yesterday's channel. Is it possible if it takes out today's channel tomorrow, you have one more run into this 173 supply? Of course, it's on the table. It's it's absolutely on the table. But again, I'm still watching the bottom channel here, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, whatever the case may be, for potential loss of the daily Bollinger Band to get back uh, below to this um, March uh, lows. But again, tomorrow, I'll definitely watch it on both sides just in case it has one more day run for a potential push to 173. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Amazon uh, continues to act uh, very, very well. It took out yesterday's channel, stopped at the Bollinger Band. I want to see tomorrow if this thing starts attacking the April uh, first highs in Micron. i tell you one thing. Micron has been uh, one of these... Names have been forgotten a long, long time. Only until recently that it had really good earnings has the stock really showed not only life, but incredible aggression. Uh, this is now the highest close in this whole formation. If the market continues uh, to move higher tomorrow, maybe we can see a push uh, into the 130 level. They were definitely coming in 
uh, with pr pretty aggressive short-term call buying today in the 130, uh, 135 calls. This will be very, very interesting to see. I like this name here, um, MNMD. I'm not really familiar with the name. It looks like it had a big move up on March the 7th, went sideways for about three weeks. Big breakout today. Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. If we can start uh, getting above this uh, Bollinger Band. The one name that had promised today, and we saw a lot of call buying in the open, and we had a couple of minor scalps uh, on the name was NVIDIA. The only problem with NVIDIA, unlike a lot of the other names today that price improved in its previous channel, NVIDIA did, right? Considering how strong uh, MU was, you figured, you know, you get some, you know, a, maybe a pull up on, on a lot of these semiconductor names. NVIDIA actually closed red. Now, the key for NVIDIA going into tomorrow, and again, one day doesn't really mean anything. You can see here the importance of reclaiming back the five day moving average. On uh, April the 1st, it got rejected off the five day and then it went lower. Today, it got rejected again off the five day and it started going lower. Tomorrow, I want to watch. I, mean, I, I think it's going to be a very, very important scenario tomorrow for NVIDIA. The fact that it couldn't rally today, the fact that it couldn't price improve, I'm definitely watching yesterday's lows, okay? If it could start building below yesterday's lows, then yeah, I think we have a, a pretty aggressive move down. Having said that, right, again, we always talk about two sides of the equation. Just like it got rejected on April 1st and got rejected today off the five-day, I want to see if it actually can wake back up and reclaim the five-day. Because if it can reclaim the five-day, then we have room all the way up to this 914 and ultimately to this 922 reversal candle on March the 27th. So again, not everything is going out of its mind just yet. But the point is, and this is what we took out of today's session was, the bulls were able to reclaim back uh, at least the 20 day. Yes, they got rejected off the five, but at least the five is in striking distance if it can start reclaiming today's channel. So it's so, something very, very uh, important. You look at some of the other semiconductor names, uh, Qualcomm had a very, very uh, strong surge today. Uh, names like LRCX continue to hang on, pretty good moves. And I'll tell you one thing, there's, there's names that really need to split. Like, look at a name, for example, like, like a booking.com. Used to be the, first, uh, the old price line. The damn thing was up 66 points today on 248,000 shares. I, uh, look at Netflix. You would figure Netflix would be such a Wall Street darling. And it used to be for months and months and years and years for a very long time. 2.9 million shares traded the whole day, despite its trading very, very aggressively. Man, this thing has been untradeable for a very, very long time. And this has been, this used to be one of my favorite stocks that I used to trade for years. Not so much. So there's a lot of names that really deserve a split. Netflix, uh, Booking.com, uh, IS, uh, ISRG. Uh, we're finally getting Chipotle uh, to do a 500 for one split. Maybe this thing will help it out as well. Even MSTR, I know MSTR has been going crazy all over the place with the whole Bitcoin name, but these stocks really need to split. I mean, there is literally very little aggressive retail participation in these names. And ultimately, the institutional money flow always moves these stocks, but, inst but retail interest kind of keeps their name alive. And a lot of these names are just really dead in the water for, you know, 90, 95 uh, percent of their times. Uh, Microsoft is another name, uh, just kind of mirroring uh, the NASDAQ 100. It got rejected again off the 10 day moving average. Again, another name uh, you have to watch in the next couple of days. It's crucial that Microsoft reclaims back the 10 day. Again, if you guys have watched this channel or watched the PS60 workshops throughout the years, the 10 day moving average, I call it the birth of the trade. So it's very, very important, not only for the queues, but every component to reclaim back their respect of five and 10 day moving average. So all in all, you still have a lot of names that are kind of in their middle of their cycles. You still have a lot of names that are absolutely doing nothing, but you do have some hope uh, in names like an Apple, in names like a Tesla that were gotten beaten down. Can they get, you know, get an, another day out of this rally? You know, it's soon to be, it's soon to be determined, but overall the cues, the magic number on the cues they need to get back above 444, okay? If they can reclaim back 444, then yes, we will go right back 
uh, to highs. If they start losing 438, well, Houston, we're going to have a problem. Again, the longer we continue to go uh, sideways on the indexes with no really big price improvement, you know, a lot of sellers will get very comfortable. A lot of buyers will get very, very frustrated. And the last thing you want to do is prolong this kind of, you know, distribution cycle. Today's session was obviously a lot more seamless uh, than it was yesterday. If you guys watched last night's video, every stock that I wanted to trade through yesterday was the move happened pre-market, whether they were shorts, whether they were remount buys, dips, whatever the case may be, bounces. Uh, today was a lot more seamless. Uh, we had several, you know, key smaller, you know, smaller pivots on NVIDIA to the upside. Uh, you know, the big one today, uh, the big one today was obviously Meta. Uh, Meta was the big one. We talked about this in last night's video. Uh, where's Meta, 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 Meta? There we go. There, Meta. Uh, 500 needs to confirm the 327 and the pre-market highs. We, we talked about this in last night's video. Nice move here. $7 move. It closed at the highs. If you look at everything else, nothing else confirmed. You know, Tesla didn't confirm to the downside. Uh, Arm didn't confirm to the downside. Apple didn't confirm to the downside. Uh, NVIDIA didn't confirm to the upside. Literally, Meta was one of the very few names uh, that had a confirmation, a technical confirmation. And that's kind of my point that everything is still continues to be, for the m most part, uh, in the in this in the kind of distribution cycle. And it's very very important to understand that, not to try to squeeze water out of a rock. Eventually. If the queues reclaim the 10 day, everything will wake up, guys. Like, like literally everything wake up. But again, like we talked about every single day, you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared on both sides of the market. And you can't just assume a supply zone is going to be confirmed. For example, you know, in the video, if the supplies don't get confirmed, then I'm watching this thing to the downside. It, you have to put yourself in a situation to ask yourself a question. Okay, do I want to be a trader in a bull market buying stocks, or do I want to become a trader? And you, you could quickly tell the disconnect between bull market permabulls versus traders. Traders wait for their green light, or sometimes their red light, right? Uh, we All we care about is channels. You know, we don't care which way. And I mean, look, I prefer a bull market. I think everybody does. It's just much easier, right? Much easier. There's more liquidity, more market participants, there's much more aggressive uh, chasing, uh, especially overnight for past performance. But I tell you, you know, the bear market of 2022 was pretty damn good. I mean, 85% uh, of that year was to the downside and, you know, elevator down, right? You know, they take talk about stairs up, elevator down. Well, 2022 was elevator down for the majority of the year. And that's why if you want to be a professional trader, you have to trade both sides of the market. It's not something new. I'm sharing with you, but when you go through a you know a distribution cycle, it's very very important to you know to have your eyes and ears open because you just don't know which side will get rejected and which side of the market will get uh, highlighted. So going into tomorrow uh, again, you know I'm watching to see kind of a delayed reaction in this Google Gemini news. Initially, uh, the stock went to you know almost 159 after the close. It came right back into the 154s. I want to see in the regular session if it gets above this channel here. Uh, Amazon, we are watching again for that uh, April 1st highs. And again, let's see if Tesla has a day two, right? We'll see. You know, let's see if Tesla has a day two. Let's see if uh, Apple has a day two. Let's see if Micron can continue its, its run. But be efficient, okay, guys? Be efficient. When you're trading a distribution channel, you really want to pick your spots. You just don't want to randomly trade, take shots. Because at least in the bull and rabid market, the market will make you right because everybody's chasing. In a distribution channel or a holding pattern, it's much more selective, uh, much more patient, uh, you know, patient driven. And if you're not patient, if, if you are careless, your account is going to suffer what Wall Street in layman's terms calls the ugly churn. And the last thing you want to do is get into an ugly churn. So that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully, everybody is doing well. Uh, for all you guys who are interested in pivots, guys, you guys want to kind of see what these pivots are all about, all you got to do is click the link in the comment section, uh, test drive the pivots, the PS60 theory for 30 days. Uh, you'll quickly understand exactly where I'm coming from, why it's so important uh, for these channels to get confirmed. And this will give you kind of an exposing aspect to the, the market on an unnormal 
or lack of normal, uh, what everybody keeps talking about. Guys, have a great day. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful Thursday. Tomorrow is my normal uh, Thursday night off, so no video. So God's help. I will see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great, great night.